Welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. It's Dave here again. I have Mike Sutton on with me today. Part of the Mission Hope book. You've heard a lot about it from us. You should go get your copy. Mission Hope. Links in the show notes. Go grab a copy of this book and give it to someone. Come on, read it yourself. Pass it along. Gift it. It's a great book. Mike comes on to talk about something very emotional, very personal from his perspective. He lost his wife and... We really connected in this episode, and I really enjoyed talking to Mike. Such a great guy, and uh, he wants to help those that are grieving, losing someone special. What happens when you lose your soulmate? How do you carry on? What do you do? Mike is here to share his story with you and what he's contributed to the Mission Hope book. Here's a little clip from, uh, from Mike's perspective on his writings and what his messages for the world here on living the next chapter here we go this uh, this book would be for any member of the family that's old enough to understand that we we live once and death is a part of life because even for myself when it happened to me i had no clue what i was in for all i knew was you cry all day long you you have moments where you're mad you're sad you're hurting you don't you don't know what the next moment's going to bring and throughout the book i take it back to no matter what mood or where i'm at on that given day that i have to ask god for the strength to get through it because there's no way i could do it on my own and as the person individuals reading it go through the chapter whether it be husband wife children it, it doesn't make any difference. You're all gonna, they're all gonna have to deal with it just like I did. And when I got to the far end of the book, the last chapter, then I finally made it pretty clear. It's like, I know how it hurt me to know what happened to my wife. And I know where my wife's at. I know she's in it. But had I not known that, I don't know that I could have dealt with it. And so chapter 17 is about taking a good look at your life are you ready to face eternity and if so where are you going to face it or where are you where is your mate going to face it and are you going to be living a life thinking we should have done it different because now you're breathing you've got the time to make that decision and once they're gone it's too late hello everyone welcome back to living the next chapter i have another author from the mission hope book and I've got to talk to some amazing people, a part of Shar Murphy's new book, Mission Hope. And today I have, a, I guess, Mike is here and Mike Sutton's on. We're going to be talking about his chapter in the book. Also, he has his own book as well, which we're going to talk about. And uh, Mike, I'm so happy to have you on the podcast. We chat a little bit before hitting record and your story's amazing. Mike, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Appreciate your time and your efforts in doing this. It's excellent. Great. So we talked already, Mike. Uh, can you share with our listeners where you are in this great big world of ours? Yes. Yeah. In a relatively small town of Sheboygan, Michigan, uh, just about 25 miles south of the Mackinac Bridge. Beautiful. Um, it's great to have you here, Mike. You have written a book of your own, and you've also then contributed to Shara Murphy's book. And uh, your story is uniquely powerful and i'm excited to have you here mike can you share, share a little bit of the background to your book that you wrote and then we'll talk about your chapter in char's book as well yes uh mine is titled to lose a soulmate um 2020 just before the covid started uh, we had had illness in the house and we thought that it was the flu, but the wife never got sick. Um, in 43 years of marriage, I've never seen her with the flu. She just never got it. She'd get bronchitis once a year and all of a sudden one day she was going to take a shower and I heard her call me and I got down there. She couldn't breathe. She couldn't move. So we got the ambulance and they took her in and they checked her out. They decided, you know, they four or five days they keep her and I got to talk to her each day every night every morning wherever we wanted to talk we could talk and when they called and said that she could come home they didn't find anything wrong it was like 
well, okay, you know, that's a great thing. So I went and picked her up. We came home. We had a week. Everything was great. We did everything we did always would do. We'd go fishing. We'd go walking, shopping. Following Thursday, she had her Zoom meetings with all the doctors or follow-up. There was heart doctors, uh, breathing doctors, and none of them had anything to say that they found anything. Everything was perfect. I said, I, I don't understand that, but I said, if you know, that's what you're telling me, okay. That night, we went. To, we had that entire day. From the time of her last Zoom meeting, we had 18 hours together with no interruptions. At 2.30, quarter to 3 in the morning, she woke up and she couldn't breathe again. And I checked her oxygen and she was down to 70, 71. So I got the ambulance and they came and they went right down the hall with their cot there. And by the time they had gotten here, we had been praying in the bedroom and holding on to each other. She didn't want me to let go on. I didn't. I didn't want to let go, but uh, they took her back to the hospital, and from that moment on, I couldn't talk to her. They, uh, I don't know if it was a coma or what, but she she couldn't hear, she couldn't reply, and I I would call all the time trying to talk with with her and the nurses were always busy I think you know COVID took a lot of their time but one night I had a nurse that happened to be in her room monitoring her and he said yeah he said I I'll put my cell phone by her ear he said you just talk he said I don't know if she'll be able to hear you so I talked I told her things that I wanted her to know but just kind of hoping it would put a spark back in her you know give her a little hope and uh I never got any replies or anything. And after a while, he, he picked up the phone. He said, are, are you all set? And I said, yeah. He said, well, he said, I don't know if this will mean anything, but he said, it's, he's seen a tear in her eye. <laughs> and that was the, that was the last time I got to talk to her. And uh, a week later, they called me on a Saturday, said it was time to come up. And by the time I got there, it was too late. I was, 12 miles away and I had my radio on in the car. Your, your mind is going in so many different directions. And uh, I really couldn't tell you what the station was playing, but all of a sudden, as I pulled through a traffic light, the radio station changed its format and it started playing songs like, Heaven Just Got Sweeter For You. And I didn't, I didn't make sense of it, but I knew something happened. And I got to the hospital and she was gone. So I come home and I had been writing in a journal because of not being able to talk to her. And one day a friend was looking at it and they said, you know, they said, you, you, you've you got a gift. You need to start writing. And I didn't think nothing of it. I just kind of laughed it off. And pretty soon I started noticing the things I was writing actually was making sense. And uh, one night I was sleeping, a title came in my head. I got up and I wrote it down, and a couple nights later I had the first chapter. And the next day I got up and I had all the title chapters, and it was just a matter of filling in. And what that book ended up being was abbreviated look at our life from the moment we met 43 years prior to what it was like after she left. And that's why it entitled us to lose a soulmate. We had we had never been apart. So, Mike, I, when I created this podcast, I tried to come up with a name that would reflect the future conversations I'd have with authors. And so it's called Living the Next Chapter. And what you're describing to me is the title of my podcast. You were living the next chapter at every stage throughout all this and that's and that's exactly how the chapters came out yeah and and now even as i move forward now not too long after writing that some of the writings that i i don't i don't think hard on them they just whatever comes in my mind and heart i kind of described it as looking at the world through the windows of my heart for some reason 
I look at things entirely different than I did ever before in my life. And I think it was and is the fact that God has given me the strength to keep going. Because I know there's you get up in a day and you gotta put a happy face on and you push all day long. But when I come home at night, it's like a safety zone. There may be nights where tears flow pretty hard and heavy. But when it gets to the point that you can't breathe and you ask God for comfort, the next thing I know, I wake up the next day and I'm ready to hit it again. And I go one day to the next. I don't plan ahead too far. I just take it a day at a time. But God's always given me the comfort to get through the day. Yeah. So it, it, there's a lot to, to be thankful for, even though it hurts bad. Yeah. You know. So, Mike, for your book that you wrote, um, so there's this old mate, like, who who would this book benefit? If if somebody could share this book with somebody in their life who's lost somebody, What what is in this book that offers that? hope that offers real real snapshot a real look into what it's like and how it feels who, who is this book for this uh, this book would be for any member of the family that's old enough to understand that we we live once and death is a part of life because even for myself when it happened to me i had no clue what i was in for all I knew was you cry all day long. You you have moments where you're mad, you're sad, you're hurting. You don't you don't know what the next moment's going to bring. And throughout the book, I take it back to no matter what mood or where I'm at on that given day, that I have to ask God for the strength to get through it because there's no way I could do it on my own. And as the person, individuals reading it go through the chapter, whether it be husband, wife, children, it, it doesn't make any difference. You're all gonna, they're all gonna have to deal with it just like it, I did. And when I got to the far end of the book, the last chapter, then I finally made it pretty clear. It's like, I know how it hurt me to know what happened to my wife. And I know where my wife's at. I know she's in it. But had I not known that, I don't know that I could have dealt with it. And so chapter 17 is about taking a good look at your life. Are you ready to face eternity? And if so, where are you going to face it? Or where, you, where is your mate going to face it? And are you going to be living a life thinking we should have done it different? Because now you're breathing. You've got the time to make that decision. And once they're gone, it's too late. <laughs> Mike, I, I don't like. I don't know. Like, I don't even know. I've been many, married for many years as well, and I just can't imagine that comrade, that go-to person that you, when you have that funny story or you have that frustration, and you just need to talk to that person. You just know that they're always right beside you. you just it's natural to turn or to pick up the phone or whatever, and you just know they'll always be answering you. They'll always be right there, and. I know when I lost my dad, yeah. the same thing. I used to, you'd see his name pop up on the phone. You're like, oh, I'll call you back. I'm, I'm doing something. But my phone doesn't do that anymore. And it's probably yeah. when I finally realized that that moment was over, that's when it really hit me is that I don't have that person that I can go to as a father-son relationship. Not in this context, and that was really hard to realize that 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 was my new reality. That was how things are now, and it took a lot. It still takes a lot. Yep, yep. I'm going on three years, and there's not a day or a moment yeah. that I don't miss her. And I, and I know that's right. the way life's got to be. But even still. I thank God every morning that I wake up and see the daylight. But I thank him again at the end of the day for getting me through it. 
I, I, I can think of her, I can have the memories, and when they get too much, the next thing I know is I wake up the next morning. It's like he knows just how much I can take. And then I must fall asleep. And when I wake up, it's a sunny day. And the one thing, too, about having a relationship like with your partner, your spouse, for me, like with my father, is a lot of your purpose is found in that relationship. And when that relationship is now gone, you find yourself looking for another outlet, purpose, something to to give to and be a part of. You shared before we had record that now that you're retired, you have some time and you do things to help people. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing now as reaching out? Yes. Uh, yep. I do volunteer not, not, I really wouldn't call it volunteer work. If someone has a project and need help, I'm I'm available. If I can help them, I'll help them. Um, I've also uh, assist with a grief survivor group. So as they have a monthly meeting, the leader will call and give me a heads up of what the topic's going to be and ask me, can I write something to hand out to the those that show up for the meeting? So each, each month I'll write a poem or a short story that will deal with the topic that myself is included that we all have dealt with or will deal with. Uh, one of them was titled Firsts. You know, going through life, we all have the first birthday, the first, first dance, the first wedding. When you lose a loved one, there's a lot of firsts. The first moment you sit down at the table, and there's one plate, one cup, one set of silverware. That's hard, you know. And it's it's things like that that if I can keep it going, I've got two children that are still in the area, so whatever I can do for them, and that's that's my number one goal. You no, know, they've got one parent now. I can't mm-hmm. take the place of their mom. Tell but me about try. their reaction to your book. How do they? How they feel when they when they got their copy? Uh, okay. My daughter still has not read it. Yeah, she can't. Uh, my son, I don't know if he read it yet or not, but he, I did see that he moved moved <laughs> it from his kitchen table. My wife's sister just notified me last week that she finally read it, and it it was available September twenty fifth of last year. And it, t- it took her that long to be able to pick it up. And she said, my wife would have been proud of me. And it's like, I don't think of it as that way. But I wanted to be able to help others who are going through it or will go through it. Like I say, I had no clue what, what was happening or what to expect. Maybe if they get a hold of this, it'll at least, it's different for everybody, but at least give them a handle on, okay, that's, this is normal. It's it's normal to have everything all turned upside down right. and twisted around. So let's switch gears, Mike, over to your your writings for with Shar and, and all the great authors part of Mission Hope. Can you tell me a little bit how you and I'm always interested to hear this, but how you and Shar actually connected about this project? I'm interested to hear that story. Yes. A- after the death of my wife, when I was still writing in the journal. These thoughts would just come to me. And so I would write them down. And like I say, they started making sense. My, I had never been on Facebook in my life. My wife always yeah. had Facebook. So when she passed, I put a note out there to her friends that, you know, here's the reason she's not going to be here anymore. And I just changed the name on the, the Facebook page. So I thought, well, I'll just start putting these writings on there. And evidently, Shar had gone through Facebook, had seen some of them. And she sent me a note saying she thought that maybe I was different than most people, at least from what she was reading. She she couldn't really figure out what was going on. So could she call me? Sure. So she called. (laughs) The first call, I never got really a chance to talk any. So she called again and apologized. The next call, then she told me that this book was coming up and that she had read some of the writings and she felt that the story that I had would be a story that would be beneficial to others. 
wanted to know what I'd be interested in. I said, I'd, I'd be happy to. So, and that's how it came about. And uh, she's been great to work so, Mike, with. Mike, one of the things I've been asking each of the authors that have, are part of Mission Hope during our conversation is if you had a message specifically for Shar, because she's going to listen to this episode as the, <laughs> the one that's pulled this book together for everyone. I just wanted to give each of the authors an opportunity. I'm going to get out of the way. And I'd like you to talk to Char directly and share your thoughts with her about being part of this project. And if you had anything you wanted to say directly to Char, because again, she'll be listening to our, our conversation. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, Char, you know, it's me and we've talked before and um, I'd just like again to thank you for this opportunity. The, the thought that you had and the heart that you've put into it, We've talked in the past how it's 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 got to be a working of God to be able to pull all these people together, everyone of different minds. There's been no complications. Everything has ran smooth. The stories all came in. And if just one small spark of hope is ignited in someone who's at the very bottom, then it's all been worth it. And I appreciate the, the time and the opportunity you've given me to do this. Mike, the one thing that we talked about too is that we both have a faith journey and I really, I, I find that is the thing you need in, in life that can help you get through some pretty amazing, amazingly hard times is your faith. And you said something about how your faith has been there for you throughout this whole thing, losing a spouse, and losing your partner. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about how your faith has kept you strong? Yes, uh, I was I was saved as a youngster, and growing up as a preacher's son, we were always in church. And but when I hit my teenage years, I kind of went my own way. And you you put a lot of miles on; they're not all good miles, but they're miles. And when something like this hits you, it automatically you know. That all you got to do is just call, just just call God. And in in this story with Shar, I I put that down there that if you know someone who's at their end, if if they're where they think the very bottom is, all they got to do is just talk to him as a friend. And and he hears you. And I hadn't totally forgot about him, but I hadn't really kept him at number one in my life. He never held that against me. He was there when I needed him. And he has stayed there each day. You know, it's it doesn't matter if I'm on the road traveling or if I'm home reading the book. When these moments of grief hit you, it's like a a huge wave, like a tsunami. And there's times that it'll be so bad that it'll take your breath away. All I got to do is pray. And he calms me. I, I just don't know. How else I could ever survive it, you know? But to know that he's there when you need him is—it's just a, a wonderful feeling. It's—it's—it's it's, it's not only a good feeling, but it causes you to look at everything different. It's like you—you you see the beauty in things more, and I think that's because he's there, and it, it just makes life so much easier. Well, Mike, this is your first time. Coming on a podcast, and I got to tell you, you, you're an amazing guest because of your story and who you are. And I'm my hope is that people who come across your book, come across this podcast episode, get to hear your heart and the fact that there is hope for those that lose their soulmate. Um, it's something you never want to think about, but. I'm sure there's going to be people listening to this that are in a similar situation and your words are going to help and your book is going to help. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that we're all going to deal with. Yeah, Have I got please, you something please. I can read? A, I, uh, I put this in the preface of my book. It says, I wanted to somehow make it not so lamented to man, eulogizing a friend who had died young, 
His word gave poignancy to humanity's ageless heart cry. Death stuns and scars us all. We ache to do that which cannot be undone. And that's exactly what you you come to realize when you face the death of a loved one. <laughs> You, you you can't change any of it. You can't say what never got said. You can't take back what was said. You, you're, you're just there. You just have to deal with the moment. And don't look back. Just keep Mike, going you forward. said that you don't consider yourself to be a writer. And that's that's a good perspective from your side because you, you're sharing your story. So you're, you're a storyteller and you're helping people with your story. What would your wife think about all this? The book? All of this, how how would she have responded to this? Had you said, I'm going to be an author, I'm going to write books and be on a podcast. What would she would have said to you? I think she'd have died <laughs> she'd be like, are you kidding? Right? Yes. She was one, she would write poetry. And she might write for a month straight, and then she might not pick it up for three months, but she'd go back and she'd write. And after she had passed, and I cleaned out, I had been working on a room. Every time one of us had a reason to go to the hospital, I would remodel a room. So when she went to the doctors, I thought, well, I'll I'll fix up her craft room for her. And when she didn't come back, I couldn't go back in there for a while and finish it. But when I did, and I started going through things and putting things back, I come on these journals. I didn't even know she had, and it was her poetry. So in one of my other books that I'm working on, I, oh, I have like, her poetry in there as well. Yeah. So she will be a published author as well. What a yep. gift. Like, what a gift. Yeah. Yeah, I think she'd be happy. I think she'd be happy, Mike. She'd be extremely proud. And she would be handing out your book to every single person that she met because uh, that's what I'm picking up by your, by the way you talk about her. Um, I, there's no way that she could not be proud of you. I'm so excited for you that you have this book. It's going to open doors to, to help a lot of people. And I hope so. That's, um, that's, that's the goal, you know, is there's too much hurt in our world. And to be able to, just help any place. Nice. That's all I'm looking for. So everyone, we're going to have in the show notes uh, links to Mike's books, um, to link to Mission Hope, with his, where he's contributing with the other 17 authors, but also to Mike's book as well. And Mike, please keep me in mind as the next book comes. I'd love to have you back again. And I appreciate that. Thank if, you. If I can ever help just, you know, as a conversation or just to be there or to the chat. I'd love to be with that door open as well. So I really touched by your story, Mike, and I'm so happy to have time with you. I appreciate that. One of these times when I get there up that go. way, maybe I'll You're always you welcome here up here in Canada. Love to have you here. Awesome. Everyone, please go check Thank out you. the show notes. Thank you, Mike, so much for being part of the podcast. Please go buy Mission Hope and all the other eight, 17 authors, 18 total, Charlie Murphy's book. Um, thank you, Mike, for being here. <laughs> Hey, thanks for being here for the podcast. Mission Hope, Thriving Through Seasons of the Soul, came up March 24th, 2023. 18 amazing authors, all corralled by the amazing Char Murphy. If you need some inspiration in your life, please go to the show notes, follow the links, go purchase the book, gift it to someone, buy copies and leave it in your waiting rooms of businesses or the dentist office just go out and buy the book and support these great authors many first-time authors first-time podcast guests a lot of firsts happening here Shar Murphy thank you Dominic Damaski publisher as well from Motivation Champs thank you so much for bringing together these amazing people and and to have these authors on these on a podcast here to talk about their chapters is so great so encouraging you, go out, check out Mission Hope, Thriving Through Seasons of the Soul. Get your copy today. Thanks for being part of the podcast. Catch you on the next one.